The concept behind the Hayek Prize is to find a thinker or an author whose book embodies the spirit of what Hayek was trying to convey. I can boil down Hayek's ideas into three simple words. Be very humble. Hayek had a really deep conception that information is inherently decentralized and that the challenge is to increase the reliance on the use of that decentralized information. What it is not is a top-down process in which one figures out what is best to do and then tries to impose it. The simple lesson that Hayek taught people is that you know less than you think. And uh, Joe Sixpack and uh, his wife Mary, they know more than you know. Hayek was such an extraordinary thinker. I just thought if people were exposed to him, the world would be a better place. The award to Tombstone was the culmination of what we're trying to accomplish with the Hayek Award. A man who started on his own personal journey to find out why did his family die, came to find a great historical crime driven by an idea that people could control society from the top. And the Manhattan Institute brought him to America to talk about this and to honor him with this great prize. Hayek's last book was called The Fatal Conceit. And what Emily Schley's book, The Forgotten Man, tells you about is the fatal conceit of the entire Roosevelt administration. If you increase prices, the economy would grow. The theory is mind-boggling stupid. In the New Deal, they had an aggressive law to manage the private economy, and it managed, among other things, actually the poultry business. And the Schecters had a little chicken business in Brooklyn. They were scrutinized because they allowed the customers to pick their chickens. Can you imagine? And that story of these chicken butchers who fought back and actually broke the New Deal because they won in the Supreme Court with their case is a Hayekian story. My book, The White Man's Burden, was a critique of foreign aid, and it had all the problems that the old Soviet central planners that, that Hayek had in mind when he was critiquing central planning. He points out that the World Bank, with all their wisdom, built a $5 billion steel plant in Africa, and it never produced a ton of steel. In the meantime, we had a great development in the world of cell phone. Fishermen go out, and they can call in and find what port to go into to get better prices for the fish. That has an enormous impact on their lives. All of the things that get invented, discovered, and implemented by people with liberty, these don't get rewarded, and these don't happen in the system of authoritarian planning. Casey Mulligan showed for the first time the impact of changes in government policy that reduce the incentives for people to work or to search for work. Casey does the math work for Hayek's story and for the story of our economy and our rather halting recovery. There was a terrific depression it began in 1920, uh, ended in the middle of 1921, and the government met this calamity by doing essentially nothing. And lo and behold, it ended, and the 20s proverbially roared, owing to the magic of the price mechanism, Hayek's favorite social institution. Ben S. Bernanke, way back in 2007, 8, and 9, spoke with the authority of an historian of the Great Depression. And not one person, I dare say, bothered to ask him, well, wasn't there another depression? Could we not draw lessons from that? I mean, is it not possible that, that free institutions allowed to function without coercion can adjust? That question, I think, was never asked, but it ought to be. The Hayek Book Board should reside with the Manhattan Institute. Indirectly, Hayek was responsible for the Manhattan Institute's founding. There was a young RAF pilot who came back from World War II, was concerned about the socialist drift of Great Britain, and went to Hayek and asked what he should do. Hayek said, you should look at the world of ideas, the people who shape the ideas, the professors, the teachers, the journalists, the authors. That's the best place to create long-run and, and substantial and permanent change. And one of the places that Anthony Fisher founded was the Manhattan Institute in 1978. Manhattan Institute, I think, has a, a great track record. Manhattan Institute understands that progress comes from creativity, not government regulation. Having something like the Hayek Prize, having great think tanks like the Manhattan Institute, it's a vital source of support for intellectuals who really want to challenge the mainstream and say, I'm sorry, I think you guys are completely wrong. Welcome to the community of courage. You're not alone. We appreciate you. Stick with us. We'll fight together.